The Watership Down podcast is intended for listeners who are familiar with the plot. There will be spoilers. This episode is scripted, recorded, edited and narrated by Neil Fisher. Hello, and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 163, in which we will be looking at season 3, episode 11 of the TV series, and episode 37 of the series overall, The Betrayal. First though, I recently had a conversation with our captain of Owsler, John Ruth, who recently left the US military, about the appeal of Warship Down to those who serve in the military. When we began going through the original novel, John had to basically take over scripting this podcast for a while, as my life was suddenly turned upside down by having to move in with my parents after my father had a catastrophic stroke in August of 2021. As a result, episodes 33 to 53 of this podcast, which dealt with chapters 33 of the novel to its end, were therefore mostly written by John, though he was very generous in allowing me to adapt them for my British voice. But the fact that it was that section of the novel that a soldier scripted was actually very appropriate. For the expedition to Ephrafa, the infiltration of Ephrafa, and the successful extraction of the Doze and and Blackavar by Bigwig is a story of pure military tactics. And John has impressed on me the absolute appeal of this story to many in the military. Because, as I have said before, The vast majority of real soldiering in war is not about fighting. The vast majority of soldiering seems to be more about concealment and survival while avoiding the enemy until you are ready to deal with them. This would be very familiar to a watership down rabbit. My actual words to John were, quote, You really opened my eyes to how it is a story that would appeal to the military, end quote. John's response also touched on what I believe is called command and control, as well as the wider political context of Ephrafa. Quote, Oh, indeed. The survival part of it, for one, and the general structure of the Ausler and even Ephrafa's council and the Auslefer. Now, those last two somewhat smack of National Socialism and how communism has often actually been been actually practiced. But go to any really bad American police department and see an Auslefer at work. Indeed, we military types, former military now for me, love the book. Lots of other things as well. Reconnaissance, what you call recce, security, both in the Warren and on the move, and even more. End quote. As we move rapidly towards the very military final climax of the 1999-2001 to TV series of Watership Down, this seems like an appropriate moment to remember this aspect of the novel that inspired it, both in terms of military tactics, but also in terms of the kind of regimes that can make the use of such tactics necessary in defence of freedom. For me, one of the best moments of this entire series is when Spartina, the spy from the basically anarcho-fascist so-called Warren of Darkhaven, realises that Watership Down is everything she has been missing from her life. Its fundamentally decent nature changes this damaged doe on the spot, and from this point on, this strong warrior doe is an ally of Watership Down. So then, let's see what she is planning to actually do about that. TV series, Season 3, Episode 11, The Betrayal. The 37th episode of the Watership Down TV series was first broadcast in Canada on the 20th of November 2001. It was written by Mary Crawford and Alan Templeton, and its German title was Campion's Betrayal. There will be a link to the episode in the notes. As the action opens, we see Bigwig running desperately towards Nuthanger Farm. It is night time. He stops by a wall and cries out Spartina's name. We see Spartina look around in panic. She makes for one of the barns. And now we see the rest of the search party from Warship Down looking for her. Among them sits Silverweed, looking at the full or round moon. The search party group together. Biggerwig is scared of what could happen to her. Silverweed has other reasons why he wants her found that he dare not mention. Hawkbit finds a scent, it seems, through a gap in the wall. Hazel tells Silverweed to stand guard while the rest of them enter the farm. As they do so, he looks at the round moon. We hear what he saw in Spartina's heart in the last episode, that if she did not return to Darkhaven by the next round moon, Blackberry would die. Bigwig is now in the farmyard calling out Spartina's name. Fearfully, she goes further into the barn. From on top of a tractor, the cat sees her and leaps to give chase. Spartina runs and takes shelter in a pile of wooden crates. The cat lashes out at her. 
She desperately kicks dust in its face. The patrol have heard the commotion and Big Wig orders them to the barn. Dandelion complains that this is too much fuss for a doe. She might just be trying to get away from Bigwig. Hawkbit says he would if he, he, if he was her. In the barn, the pile of crates starts to collapse. The cat has nearly reached Spartina, and Bigwig and Hazel knock it aside violently. This is followed up by Fiverr. The cat gets up and starts to square up to Fiverr, but the arrival of Hawkbit and Dandelion by his side changes its mind, and it retreats. All the rabbits, including Spartina, run from the barn to where Silverweed is waiting. Spartina, seeing Silverweed, looks sheepish. Bigwig asks why on earth she felt the need to run from Watership Down in the middle of the night. She apologises and says there was something she had to do. Silverweed, still staring at the moon, begins to look angry. He has had enough. He turns around and reveals that she is Woundwart's spy and was going back to Darkhaven. Spartina panics and tries to run, but somehow the doe who defeated Campion with a single kick is held by, of all rabbits, Hawkbit and Dandelion. It seems the comedy owlsler is firmly a thing of the past. Bigwig is incensed. He orders Spartina brought back to Watership Down. At Darkhaven, training for the coming attack on Watership Down has begun in earnest. Woundwort looks on approvingly as a mass of his warriors attack four rabbits on the peak of a spoil pile. Two of these are Campion and Granite, who comments to Campion that deaths are usual in training at Darkhaven. The warriors of this warren are preparing for a multi-wave attack uphill. Vervain, in a moment of candour, admits he finds the sight chilling. Woundwort says that as soon as Spartina returns, he will know where Watership Down is, and it will be destroyed. In the honeycomb on Watership Down, Spartina confesses all, including how she threatened Silverweed into silence. But she says she can no longer carry out her mission to report back the location of Watership Down to Woundwort. Hannah asks why on earth they should believe her. Spartina repeats what Campion said about Woundwort fighting to destroy what he hates, while the rabbits of Watership Down fight to protect what they love. She said it made, says it made no sense at the time. Now it does. At Darkhaven, you survive by allying yourself with the strong. She believes they can defeat Woundwort. The connection between these last two points is not made clear. Hazel asks what changed her mind. She says they all did, and Bigwig in particular. But he is having none of it. He had fallen for a liar, and he is angry. Bigwig tells Silverweed to look into Spartina's heart. Silverweed goes one better. He tells Bigwig to touch his paw so he can see for himself. As the magic starts, Bigwig's eyes, start, eyes change in the same way Silverweed's and Fiverr's did during their psychic battle of two episodes ago. He sees a flashback of everything that has happened since Spartina captured Blackberry. And then, at the end, he sees him and Spartina sitting together under a full moon at some point in the future. Or at least, the future Spartina genuinely wants. This vision terrifies Bigwig, and he runs out of the burrow. Silverweed declares she is telling the truth. Hazel asks why, in that case, she was returning to Darkhaven. And now the terrible truth about Blackberry emerges. She knew Campion would give her a way to wash it down, and had to use the threat against Blackberry as leverage. The round moon is tonight. Spartina says there is still time. She begs to be allowed to return to Darkhaven. At Darkhaven... Granite stares at the now round moon. Sadly, he goes to Blackberry's burrow, where she is sleeping. He looms over her and raises his paws, and is attacked by Campion. While pinned down, Granite makes out that he couldn't do it. He came to help Blackberry escape. Well, it didn't look like it to me. Campion asks why he should believe him. He points out how Blackberry treated his wounds, breaking the laws of Darkhaven by doing so. Blackberry says to let him go. Campion does so and says they've been trying to escape since Spartina left, but cannot get past the guards. Granite says he di they didn't grow up in Darkhaven. He knows a way. Spartina is running back to Darkhaven as quickly as she can, followed by a warship down patrol. While running, Bigwig and Hazel have a brief conversation about love and betrayal. Dandelion and Fiver bring up the rear, both exhausted. On warship down... Hannah and Silverweed are collecting wild strawberries for a feast to celebrate Blackberry's imminent return. Silverweed makes it clear that his abilities differ from Fiverr's, 
rather than actually seeing the future, he can, when he touches someone, sometimes see what he calls their trail to tomorrow. This was what frightened Bigwig. Hannah says she wishes she was more useful. When Kihar was with them, she could help to see from the air, air with him, but not now. To comfort her, Silverweed touches Hannah on the shoulder, and he sees it. His eyes turn. He says, You'll help your friends soon enough, Hannah. Excitedly, Hannah asks him if she uses the magic, but Silverweed is evasive. He suddenly looks very sad. Spartina and the others have reached the road bridge. She says she must go on alone. When Bigwig goes to her, she promises him she will not betray Watership Down. She asks if she can come back to him. If you can, is his sad reply. He still seems angry when he gets back to the others, especially when Hawkbit questions how long they will be hanging around in Darkhaven territory. Hawkbit tries pointing out that being in love is supposed to make you all soft and gooey. Bigwig clearly hasn't received that memo. Back at Darkhaven, Granite tells Campion and Blackberry that the secret escape route lies inside the chief's quarters. Woundwart and Vervain are in there. Woundwart holds his paw in a beam of moonlight and tells Vervain his destiny is at hand. Vervain seems unimpressed. A warrior arrives to tell them that Spartina has returned. They leave to welcome her back. Granite says this is their chance. The escape route is a spiral pathway up the walls of the chief's, qu chief's quarters, passable if you have a head for heights. Thanking Granite, Blackberry and Campion start to make up their way up the path. Campion tells Granite he knows what it is like to break a warrior's oath, but you must do what is right. And I guess that can be the purpose of a warrior's oath sometimes, to persuade people to do what they know isn't right. Woundwort leads Spartina towards his quarters. Before she says anything, she speaks with Granite and is relieved to learn that he couldn't keep his promise to kill Blackberry. Entering Woundwort's quarters, Woundwort demands to know the location of Hazel's Warren. From above, Campion is shocked to see Spartina. He says to Blackberry he hoped Hazel would realise she was a spy. In a tragic example of the fog of war, he leaps from the path to attack Spartina, but is pinned down immediately by Woundwort. Campion had told Blackberry that her life was more important to him than Watership Down, but faced with the actual choice in the moment, he chooses differently, as Blackberry said she would want him to. The game is up. Campion is revealed as a traitor to Darkhaven and Woundwort. Blackberry is spotted on the path. Campion begs her to keep going, but Vervain threatens to have Campion harmed if she does. Blackberry returns back down the path. Campion despairs. By the road bridge, the rabbits of Watership Down have to hide as a Darkhaven patrol passes by. And it is at that moment that Fiverr has one of his more inconvenient visions. Neither claw nor fang will win the day. Only words can save the world today. But the price of words will cost tomorrow. A friend will pay and we will sorrow. Inevitably, Fiverr has been heard by the patrol. They enter the bush where the Watership Down rabbits are hiding. We hear an almighty punch-up and see the Dark Haven patrol all unconscious a very sanitised version of actual lapine violence. Hawkbit has a go at Fiverr, but Hazel is more concerned with what he said. Fiverr isn't clear if one of them has to die to defeat Darkhaven, but one thing is certain. Darkhaven is coming to Watership Down. Nothing can stop that now. Hazel says that Spartina, Campion and Blackbeard are on their own. They have to get back to Watership Down, and they have to be ready. At Darkhaven, Spartina is told to reveal the location of Hazel's Warren. She says it is called Watership Down. That name on its own would mean nothing. Presumably there is a Lapine name for the Warren, but in the whole of the Watership Down storytelling universe we never discover what that is, and in Richard Adams' two books the word Watership isn't used at all until Heisenthaler uses it in Tales from Watership Down. Vervain comments sarcastically on how rustic the name sounds but there is more. Spartina says it lies in the high hills towards the rising sun. Blackberry whispers to Campion that Spartina is lying about the location. Vervain sadistically asks Campion to confirm the location, which he does. Woundwalk thanks Spartina and orders Campion and Blackberry taken away. They are to be executed at dawn. But Vervain is not finished. Woundwalk tells him not to gloat about being right about Campion, 
and while clearly gloating, he points out how odd it is that Campion so easily confirmed the location. He is tougher than that. Woundwart has to agree. Vervain says he thinks Spartina is playing games and asks to be given a chance to prove it. Woundwart looks defeated for once. Using a phrase that is a bit unclear, he says Vervain has a nose for these kind of things and tells him to do what he must. Looking very pleased with himself, Vervain says he will. Spartina approaches the blocked and guarded burrow where Campion and Blackberry are being held. She tells Granite, who is guarding it, that she wants to speak to the prisoners. Granite quietly says he doesn't think she should. She tells him to stand aside. He tells her to remember he tried to warn her. Now alone, Spartina, who has been so cautious before, tells Campion and Blackberry that she will try to get them out and will not lead Woundwalk to Watership down. But she has not seen or heard either Campion or Blackberry. And the face that emerges above the oil drum blocking the burrow entrance is that of a very pleased-looking Vervain. Spartina is immediately detained. Woundwart orders her put with Campion and Blackberry. She will die with them. On more ship down, Hannah is calling on Yona the Hedgehog. She is worried about the price she might pay for using the magic. Yona says that the more powerful the magic, the greater the price that must be paid. But not to worry. She might never need to use it. But Hannah isn't so sure. She can feel the magic inside her, and it is powerful, and she thinks she will need to use it soon. At Darkhaven, Woundwort is about to indulge in one of the over-elaborate execution methods that seem to be on trend here, as opposed to the simpler, just being torn to shreds that was used at Ephrafa. We see a human quarry worker drilling a hole in a rock face, into which he places sticks of dynamite. He retreats to a detonator, and a huge boulder is blasted away. Woundwort, watching, orders the sentence carried out. The prisoners and guards approach a pit right under where the man is drilling the next blast hole. Vervain points out to Woundwort that if they kill all three prisoners, there will be no one in Darkhaven who knows where Watership Down is. He might have mentioned this earlier. Woundwort says traitors must pay. Vervain agrees, but why not use them first? Campion smiles at Blackberry and Spartina. He says they good, gave Woundwort a good run. Suddenly, Vervain shouts to the guards to bring Campion back and carry on with the doze. The prisoners struggle, but both Spartina and Blackberry are thrown into the pit. As they struggle to climb back out, Campion is taken before Woundwort. He is told the doze can live if he agrees to reveal the location of Watership Down. Woundwort points out that he hasn't got much time to decide. The blasting alarm goes off. Woundwort points out that nothing can survive what is about to happen. Utterly defeated. Campion, who was prepared to die with Spartina and Blackberry a moment before, agrees. He could contemplate dying with Blackberry, but not living without her. Woundwort tells Campion to get the doze out himself. He won't risk his loyal troops for tra traitorous scum. The man is attaching the wires to the detonator. Campion desperately runs to the pit and tips a long boulder, conveniently placed on the edge of the pit, into it. Spartina and Blackberry scrabble up the boulder. The man raises the detonator. The dynamite explodes. All three prisoners run clear just in time. The rush of air from the blast picking them up and depositing them at Woundwort's feet. Woundwort tells Campion to lead him to Watership Down. Blackberry cries that he can't. But Woundwort disagrees. Campion is practised in betrayal. Campion says he will do it. All is lost. Campion, finally, has had to choose between Watership Down and Blackberry. And has chosen... Blackberry. On Watership Down, the patrol arrives back. Bigwig is unhappy about leaving their three allies behind, but Hazel's responsibility is to the whole Warren. He will do what he must to protect them. Fiverr, looking out over the down, now has a terrifying vision. He sees a dark shadow creeping over the land and says, It's coming. The evil is coming. Is it canon? In the original novel, the attack on Watership Down by Afrafa comes almost without warning. Here, the imminent attack by Darkhaven is being anticipated and planned for. 
While the rabbits of the original novel would not have been as human in their approach to defence as they will be here, it is interesting to speculate how the watership down of that story would have prepared if they'd had a lot more notice. Darkhaven's continued use of bizarre Hanna-Barbera-like execution methods makes for more entertaining viewing than simply being ripped apart, and of course gives the victims more chance of escape. But it also takes us yet further from the world of the novel. However, the character of Spartina, the warrior Doe, is surely one of this season's best creations, and also the whole series. Very broadly, in terms of Richard Adams' writing, she can perhaps be best compared to Flyeth of Tales from Watership Down. Contrast her role with that of the gender-swapped Blackberry, who has basically been given the role of damsel in distress for four episodes now. So, not canon, obviously. But this episode is a good bit of storytelling in its own right. Next time, preparations for war begin in earnest. Thank mm-hmm. you.